this is. This is talking foreign policy, a critical look at Canada's role abroad. I'm Eve Engler. Today, we're here to talk about an incident that took place uh, yesterday, Wednesday, November 21st, early in the morning. There were um, the Toronto police uh, raided a, a few houses of people they allege uh, uh, put up posters and uh, fake blood on an indigo uh, bookstore in Toronto. And uh, the incident about two weeks ago, it drew a lot of attention uh, because the pro-Israel groups claimed it was it was an anti-Semitic uh, incident, even though there's been a long-standing boycott of, uh, of chapters Indigo going back 15 plus years because the CEO, Heather Reisman, and her uh, husband have given somewhere around $100 million dollars uh, to a charity they set up called the Hessek Foundation for Lone Soldiers, which uh, basically assists non-Israelis who join the Israeli uh, uh, mil uh, military. To discuss this matter, um, uh, we have uh, Shane Martinez, who is a lawyer um, who's also looked at the Hessek Foundation and has looked at the question of, um, of uh, Canadian uh, charities assisting uh, projects uh, in Israel. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for coming on, uh, Shane. Um, do you know anything more about the arrests and uh, the potential sort of legal side that um, uh, people are facing and, and what's been, uh, what they've been accused of? Thanks for having me. Uh, so based on information from a variety of sources, it appears that at around 5 a.m. yesterday, being the 21st of November, officers with the Toronto Police raided numerous homes, arresting at least six people suspected of being involved in the protest action at Indigo. Computers and cell phones were reportedly seized. And in addition to the people who's had, who had their homes uh, raided, it seems as though an additional two people were also charged. Now, immediately following news of the arrest, about 50 people gathered in front of the Toronto Police Services 52 Division in solidarity with the arrestees, uh, calling for the release. And by approximately 6 p.m. yesterday, everyone who had been arrested was released. It's unclear exactly what charges they're facing, but they likely include mischief, interference with property, and, and perhaps other offenses as well. Now, the, the timing of the raid is quite troubling. Uh, because heavy-handed tactics uh, in response to an act of peaceful political expression should really be a concern to everyone. And if these raids did in fact occur at 5 a.m., that may be indicative of what is referred to as a night warrant. And those are only supposed to happen in exceptional circumstances. A night search that does not comply with the relevant pro uh, provisions of the criminal code uh, is invalid, and it's potentially in violation of Section 8 of the Charter, which protects people from unreasonable search and seizure. And that kind of a warrant may be quashed on application if those violations are substantiated. Uh, we'll have to see where things go, but attacking the search warrant application may be one strategy that the defense will want to consider. Well, yeah, I mean, just on the surface of it, as a non-lawyer, the, the the whole uh, the you know arresting people, holding, detaining for most of a day on the grounds of putting up some posters seems seems a little bit uh, uh, excessive, and clearly um, it may even uh, be a violation of their uh, their their rights. Um, but but I think also to me this 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 opens up the, a bigger question around Canada. Uh, Canada Palestinian dispossession that we that we haven't we don't hear enough about and even with the with the uh, the Hessek Foundation so I guess the first question which is the whole question that this is a registered charity and and that it's uh, 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 subsidized by uh, Canadian taxpayers but what what do we know about um, about Hessek right so so the Hessek Foundation for Lone Soldiers it was founded by Heather Reisman and Jerry Schwartz in two thousand and five. And Reisman is, of course, the CEO of Indigo. Uh, Hessek serves as an incentive or a reward for non-Israelis to join the Israeli military. And it does this by providing scholarships to them to fund their post-secondary education after they've served their time in the Israeli military. A boycott of Indigo has been going on for perhaps the last 18 years now uh, due to Reisman's involvement with Hessek. And this included an incident in 2010 when 19 retired and current professors uh, from the Mount Allison University out east 
signed a petition against Reisman receiving an honorary degree from the university. And more than 100 other people from across Canada had sent the school emails protesting the decision to award the degree. Um, so there's, you, you know, there, there's a long history here of uh, Indigo and Haseg uh, jointly uh, being targeted by protests um, because of the funding that Haseg provides um, that benefits people who are enlisted uh, or have been enlisted in the Israeli military. And as many people are likely aware, Israel's military has a long track record of human rights abuses and alleged war crimes, crimes against humanity. Uh, it's presently under investigation by the Office of the Prosecutor at the International Criminal Court, who's looking at war crimes going back to 2014. Uh, and as a side note, I should probably mention that Canada has unsuccessfully lobbied the prosecutor's office to halt its investigation of Israeli war crimes. But back to his seg itself, many of those who lead the foundation are former members of Israelis, uh, excuse me, of Israel's military. Uh, it creates an incentive or reward for young people to serve in Israel's military, uh, even though they have no obligation to do so. And the list of illegal activities that Israel's military is involved in is, is really too long to cover in our discussion today. Um, you know, it supports the expansion of illegal settlements throughout the West Bank. It bulldozes Palestinian homes. It arbitrarily arrests hundreds of Palestinians, including children every year, holds them in administrative detention. But most clearly right now, it's carrying out a campaign of displacement and genocide in Gaza, right? denying safe passage, denying food, water, medicine, bombing residential buildings, hospitals, schools, killing over 12,000 people, more than 5,000 of whom are children. And these are clear violations of the Rome Statute and the Fourth Geneva Convention that the occupation forces have been carrying out. So, so basically, and the reason I say use the hundred million dollars that they that they um, they've donated to Hesek is because there was a report from 2014 to 2018 into private charities that said, I think it was 45 million dollars that had been given uh, to the Hesek Foundation. And I know in other years I've seen numbers at like five million, seven million per year. So over 18 years, something in the range of I, I don't know the exact number, something in the range of a hundred million dollars. So from a, from a tax standpoint, from a registered charity standpoint, depending on your tax bracket, and of course, uh, Heather Reisman and Jerry Schwartz would be at a high end of the tax bracket because they're, they're billionaires. Um, it would be as much as like a third or even I think 40% of, of, um, of the money that's essentially basically a tax write-off. So, so they're getting, they're not paying taxes to the Canadian government uh, uh, because they're doing a, a quote unquote charitable exercise, which is supporting um, non-Israelis, you know, New Yorkers or Vancouverites who go and join um, the Israeli military. Now, the, the Canadian Revenue Agency um, actually has rules around this question of foreign militaries. And my understanding is that they, they, um, they don't, uh, charities are not supposed to be able to support uh, other countries' military. So, so can you just sort of explain how uh, how HESIC, uh potentially violates Canada Revenue Agency um, uh, regulations? Mm -hmm. So HESEC potentially violates the policy of the Canada Revenue Agency, um, specifically uh, something that's called a guideline document, uh, CG002 which states that increasing the effectiveness and efficiency of Canada's arms, armed forces is charitable, but supporting the armed forces of another country is not. Uh, and that's really what's what we see happening here. Um, HESEG has assets in the range of $15 million, according to some of the last uh, filings with the Canada Revenue Agency. And they effectively cover costs that would otherwise be the responsibility of the Israeli military. Uh, Post-secondary education for individuals transitioning from military service to civilian life is a need already contemplated and addressed by the Israeli government. Uh, Israel's Ministry of Defense operates what's known as the Foundation and Unit for Discharged Soldiers, um, which is the national responsible, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the national authority responsible for providing assistance, uh, benefits, and services to soldiers who are released from their service in the IDF. Uh, Israel's Ministry of Defense, uh, you know, it, it describes the foundation uh, in unit for discharged soldiers as uh, Israel's leading institution supporting the country's veterans. And it states uh, that it provides them with comprehensive assistance, including financial grants, 
um, and benefits geared towards assisting them in completing their studies in higher education, as well as vocational training and, and professional guidance. And HISSEC has even partnered with something known as the uh, Duvdevin Scholarship Fund, uh, which grants academic scholarships to Duvdevin uh, alumni. Now, Unit 217 of the Israeli Occupation Forces, also known as Duvdevin, it's an undercover, undercover uh, commando unit uh, within the Israeli military that's known for disguising itself and blending in with Palestinian populations in the occupied territory uh, to carry out operations. And scholarships are based on financial need and excellence during army service. And for decades, Dubdevin has been the subject of international criticism for an array of alleged human rights violations. There is legal precedent around whether it is legal to donate, um, uh, excuse me, whether it's uh, legal for donations to, to be sent to the benefit of a, of a foreign army. Uh, back in 2002, the Federal Court of Appeal heard a case um, called Canadian Magan David Autumn, uh, or CMDA, uh, for Israel versus uh, the Minister of National Revenue. And the Canada Revenue Agency took issue in that case with the fact that uh, the organization had donated ambulances that were being used in the West Bank and were therefore being used to support uh, the permanence of illegal Israeli settlements in the area. And it also took issue with the fact um, that the organization had purchased ambulances, or, or at least one ambulance, um, that had been transferred over to Israel, uh, Israel's military uh, for their use. And the Federal Court of Appeal ultimately uh, uh, upheld the CRA's revocation of the organization's charitable status. And the revocation occurred in part due to the non-charitable transfer of equipment to a foreign military, but also due to the fact um, that CMDA's support for illegal settlement activity was contrary to public policy. Um, so what we see here is that projects designed to benefit or support a foreign military, especially when that foreign military is involved in illegal occupation, and settlement activities, um, those are not legitimate charitable purposes in Canada. And an organization with charitable status that supports Israel's military is also irreconcilably at odds with Canada's foreign policies on human rights, as well as Canada's policy on key issues in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Oh, and then, you know, beyond uh, HESIC, um, are there other examples of uh, charities violating uh, CRA rules? There, there are. Uh, there's a variety of other charities um, that allocate funds in ways which uh, appear to benefit the Israeli military. Um, some of them are more blatant about it than others. Uh, one example is the Canadian Zionist Cultural Association, which is an organization that appears to have little, if any, activity here in Canada and appears to operate primarily for the benefit of soldiers in the Israeli military. Uh, it had revenue last year of approximately $5.8 million dollars. Um, the CZCA, it operates in close cooperation with another organization that doesn't have charitable status called the Association of Soldiers uh, Israel Canada, uh, which is not uh, a registered charity. It can't provide tax receipts to donors, but the CZCA operates in tandem and in cooperation with it to provide those tax receipts. Uh, the two share an office, they share a phone number, they share staff, um, they hold joint annual fundraisers. And uh, the Canadian, the, excuse me, the Israeli military's own website um, once listed the CZCA as an organization that was authorized to raise donations for it, for the Israeli military. Uh, and in 2019, the CZCA allocated over $1.7 million to Yahad. Uh, that's an organization uh, which says that its aim is to raise funds for uh, IDF soldiers. Um, other examples exist as well, uh, such as the Jewish National Fund of Canada. Uh, it had previously been the subject of a Canada Revenue Agency audit over a complaint that it used charitable donations to build infrastructure for the Israeli military. And in a somewhat rare move, the CRA's Charities Directorate notified the JNF that it had intended to revoke its charitable status as it no longer met the conditions for charitable registration. However, it managed to make changes and keep its status, and it presently has uh, $30 million in assets, which it uh, funnels over to uh, uh, Israel for various purposes. Um, another organization as well is uh, the Beth Olaf uh, Charitable Organization. It lost its charitable status as a result of uh, increasing the efficiency and effectiveness 
of the Israeli Armed Forces and funding projects in the West Bank. Um, it reportedly served as a conduit uh, for funding from other groups. And curiously, its donations had grown from very little to over $60 million during the six year period before the CRA finally took action. There's numerous other examples as well, uh, but unfortunately, more often than not, uh, the CRA fails to take enforcement action against organizations with charitable status, um, which funnel money to the benefit of the Israeli military, despite this being a clear violation of the CRA's policy. The whole question of the charities, I, I think it's actually Canada's biggest contribution to Palestinian dispossession. There's a very good uh, um, research that um, Karen Rodman from Just Peace Advocates has done showing that it's about uh, uh, more than 200 million a year uh, direct funding from registered Canadian charities to projects in Israel. Uh, and and um, some of those support the Israeli military, some of them support racist uh, organizations, some of them support West Bank uh, settlement projects, which all that um, is supposed to contravene current uh, Canada Revenue Agency rules. Um, uh, so the whole question is a really important uh, question for the Palestine Solidarity Movement, which I think um, doesn't give enough attention to this to, to this question. Uh, but but uh, let's hope that the Toronto police's over the top reaction to to um, some people putting up some uh, some posters on on uh, Indigo bookstores uh, storefront that that will uh, open up more discussion of the Hessek Foundation and um, and the fact that it's a charity and open up to a bigger uh, a broader discussion of how Canada's revenue the Canada Revenue Agency is enabling uh, Palestinian uh, dispossession. But for now, we'll leave it there. Thanks a lot for uh, breaking this down, uh, Shane. And um, yeah. Thank you, Eve.